Many people are confused about when we use constant voltage circuitry versus constant current. In this video, I'll explain the differences so you can make intelligent lighting choices. LEDs are inherently constant current devices, so we use constant current circuitry whenever we can. But there are many cases when we can't, and then we have to use constant voltage. If we know the size of the lighting load in advance, we tend to use constant current circuits. If we don't know the load in advance, we use constant voltage. But wait, you say, we're designing the system, so shouldn't we always know the load in advance? No. For example, most low voltage under cabinet rigid lighting is extendable. Most flexible low voltage strip is cuttable. So people are making decisions in the field that the factory can't know in advance. For those products, we must use constant voltage circuitry. Here's an example of a simple LED retrofit luminaire. Whomever designed this knew exactly how many strips they were going to use and how many LEDs are on each strip. So they used a constant current circuit. It's just a string of LEDs and a current source, in this case 1.05 amps. It's efficient and an intelligent design, but you can't extend or cut these strips or it won't work. By contrast, this is a popular LED light bar from Environmental Lights. I can extend it if I want. This is a popular LED strip from Environmental Lights. I can cut it on any one of these cut marks and make it the length I need for my project. In this case, we have to use constant voltage circuitry like this. You can see the current limiting resistor in each segment. The top and bottom rail of this circuit has a 12 volt difference, and the resistor will drop about a volt or two, and the other 10 or 11 volts will be dropped over the three diodes, around 3.5 volts per diode. For many low power strips, each leg carries about 20 milliamps, and so we use the resistor as a cheap current source. It's not the most efficient design in the world, but it does allow you to cut the strip on any one of the cut lines to make it the length you want. Some people wonder why we don't just use a slightly lower voltage and leave the resistors out. What happens is that these diodes are not all exactly the same. Some have slightly lower resistance than others. If you don't use the current limiting resistor, the current tends to flow through the segments with the lowest resistance. This current imbalance causes the life of the strips to be shorter. Many years ago, I had a customer who didn't believe me and requested I make a constant voltage strip without current limiting resistors. I made him sign a release indicating there was no warranty and sure enough, the strips failed after a year and he lost his customer. So we don't even do that by special request anymore. It's a better idea to leave the current limiting resistors in place to balance the load across all the segments. So there you have it. If you're designing a luminaire and you know what the load is going to be in it, you'll probably be best with a constant current design. If your light source is a variable length, you'll choose constant voltage. Now there's one other innovation that came along fairly recently where the current limiting resistor in a constant voltage strip is replaced by a little chip that attempts to provide constant current. This is a better way than using current limiting resistors, but it costs a little bit more. Environmental Lights has an extensive line of such constant voltage strip, which we call current control. What's nice about this strip is that the current control chip adjusts for voltage drop on the chip. So if you have a 24 volt strip and five meters from the power source, it droops to 21 volts, the current control chip knows to drop the resistance it provides, which keeps the current up. So your lights are just as bright far from the power supply at 21 volts as they are next to the power supply at 24 volts. You should know that 21 volts is about as low as you can go before the light intensity starts falling. That's about where the constant current chip reaches its minimum resistance near zero, and all further voltage drop comes from the LEDs. Three things to remember. Number one, current control is usually designed into 24 volt, not 12 volt systems because the limit of class two wiring at 24 volts is 100 watts, whereas it is only 60 watts at 12 volts. So you can more easily create larger layouts at 24 volts than 12 volts. And those larger layouts are exactly where the current control approach helps the most. Number two, some people call the current control approach constant current, but I think this is confusing and we don't do that. These strips are constant voltage strips with a constant current chip on them. But you have to buy constant voltage power supplies for them. That's why I don't call them constant current strips. If we did that, people would think they needed to buy constant current supplies and that wouldn't work. Number three, some dimming supplies operate by reducing the DC voltage to the strip rather than by modulating the pulses of power to the strip. That doesn't work on current control strips very well because the current control chip is designed to counteract the dimming technique. For current control strips, you're better off using dimmers or controllers employing pulse width modulation instead of voltage reduction. If you want help putting together a great low voltage LED strip light or light bar system, call us and get the expert advice and friendly service any of our sales engineers can provide. We value your business and we always cater to people who make their living designing, installing, or specifying lighting. If you're a pro, 
you'll want to talk with another pro, so give us a call.